Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Lance from Nerthus TV again. Today we are having a look at turning your iPad Pro, in this case a 12.9 inch, into a drawing tablet. There are various applications that can do this. We're going to have a look at two of them today. There are many tablets and drawing tablets available right from the cheaper versions like the UG, XP Pen, Huion, 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 not too sure how to say that, but them, uh, right up to and probably, well not probably, definitely the most expensive which is Wacom, which are used for obviously professionals that are going to make their money out of it. But for those of us that have a iPad Pro and the Pencil, we already basically have all the tools apart from a piece of software that can let us use that as a drawing tablet on your Mac or your PC, it doesn't really matter which, but you have all the tools available to you there including pressure sensitivity, um, tilt sensitivity, all of that type of thing that you need if you were a professional artist or animator etc. The first application we're going to look at is an application called Duet Display. Uh, for this application you have to have it connected to either your Mac or your PC via your lightning cable um, but the plus side is it does actually work on PC as well as Mac. When you launch this application what it does is it adds in a, another display output for your Mac or your PC. So in this case I have a monitor over there, the monitor of my Mac laptop and of course now this will become the third monitor. Like with the others there's a piece of software that you have to install on your PC or Mac which is freely available from their website. There's always a link in the app description and then you have to install the application itself onto your iPad. And when you launch the application, okay in the latest update from Apple the Duet display has been a little bit broken so you have to actually use it as a airplay device so you have to go onto your let me show you here so you have to go to your display settings and you'll see the airplay display and you can select where is it there Duet IS but as you can see now you have scaling and selections and whatnot for your actual iPad which is now a in this case third display. You can also go to the Duet config which we will attempt to do. And where are you? See this is another problem is it occasionally disconnect. Evidently Apple is working on it so hopefully this won't be broken for too much longer. But you can also go and do some pretty decent settings. So you can set it to 60 frames a second. Uh, the quality, in this case high quality, basically a sort of a retina. Yeah, and they can use retina when available. So that's the resolution that's running at right now, I think. Yes, that's it. And now you get to use it as a third display. In this case, what we'll do is we'll drag our application onto that screen. And we can now start drawing on it. As you can see. There is a little bit of latency, you can see from the how long it takes for that line to appear from when I've actually drawn past there. This particular piece of software is great if you need a second display on the go and that type of thing. If you want to make use of all the features as an artist then what you need to do is you probably need to upgrade to the Pro package which is a problem with all of these types of application. They have a base model which you pay for. I mean you buy this app and then if you want all the really fancy features you then have to go and pay for the pro version. 
I suppose the overall experience is pretty good. Um, you do get, you know, the basic drawing facilities. And it is a third monitor, well, second monitor for most. But you don't get things like pressure sensitivity. You don't get tilt sensitivity and that type of thing, unless you're willing to fork out for the Pro Package, uh, which is $3.99 a month or $20 a year. I suppose if you are a professional, then there is quite a few things that come with that. So uh, the, the software is slightly better. It's geared more for drawing as opposed to just a second monitor, that type of thing. As I said earlier, one thing to note for now is until Apple fixes that bug, uh, which I believe it is Apple because it's not just Duet that it's happening with, until Apple fixes this ability, you're going to have to use it as an air, air display, which I think is also the reason why we have that little bit of delay because I don't remember this delay in the previous version. So bear that in mind. You see there's quite a bit of delay there. Bear that in mind when you're having a look at this that it will get better as soon as they fix that bug. The next app we're going to look at is Astropad. The setup is pretty much the same, although with Astropad it does not add an extra screen. But instead it allows you to select an area on an existing screen to display and draw on. We have our application now open on our MacBook screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to let AstroPad take over a section of that screen so that we can draw directly onto that app. The other thing is that AstroPad is also only available for the Mac. So there's no PC version as yet for it. As with Duet, there's two versions that you can get. The one is a subscription version and is made mainly for professionals that want to use their iPads as proper drawing tablets. It has things like your tilt sensitivity and upgraded engine, as well as things like you'll see there's the paid for version and there's the free version. And when you launch the free version, you'll see that it pops up with this window that you can now drag and select what screen, what area, the various resolutions. What I'm going to do is just drag it to the corner and then keeping the aspect ratio, just drag it to the bottom. This way I get to use the entire iPad screen for my drawing area, whereas the last one was resolution based. And then you just click and you're ready to go. I'm just going to drag the application in a little bit so that it fits nicely to the screen. With the non-upgraded version of AstroPad, however, you do get pressure sensitivity. So you can start off and you'll see there's a fair bit of pressure sensitivity as I draw through there. That's nice because that's uh, not a paid option or extra like as in with Duet. However, the professional version of AstroPad is a lot more expensive than the one for Duet was. Uh, this one is $11.99 US a month or $79.99, let's call it what it is, $80 a year US for the subscription service, which will also allow you to use that second app that I showed you. If you are a professional and this is what you need without spending anything from 500 to 3,500 euros for a Wacom, then it is probably a good option to spend that $80 a year, which in the bigger scheme of things is not a hell of a lot of money if this is what you're doing for a living. You will then get your tilt sensitivity. You will then get an upgraded engine, they say, which is meant to be faster specifically for drawing applications. Although I can't see a hell of a lot of lag just with this one, if you have a look. That's pretty instantaneous. I'll 
do that again and I'll slow it down by half so that you can see. Pretty good. Also, with the cheaper of the big drawing tablets, um, whether they are Wacom, one of the Chinese brands or otherwise, they all have this thing called parallax. Now parallax is basically the gap between the point of your stylus slash pencil, whatever, and where it looks like the paper is. So there's that thickness of the glass, that type of thing, which comes into play. And if you put your pen down, there's a gap between the pen and where it's actually drawing, which some people have issue with. Other people don't really notice it. And from what I hear, it takes pretty quick to get used to. But that's something that you don't really have to worry about here because there is virtually zero parallax. I mean, if you really want to pixel peep and go and have a look and zoom in and check. I'm sure there is a little bit because I mean it does have a piece of glass on the front of it but not something that's really an issue. The professional version of Duet as well as AstroPad allows you for additional features if you're paying the subscription fee. Uh, various gestures that you can use per application. In AstroPad's version you can actually use these and set them up customized for each application so if you launch uh, something like Photoshop it'll have a, a separate set of brushes and gestures specifically for Photoshop or this app sketchbook and the various others that are available you can then set these up for whatever your usage case is which is nice um, so you do get a lot of extra another one of the pluses for AstroPad is that it works over wireless as well as USB. You'll see there, it's actually telling me that our iPad is connected via cable, but you can disconnect it and walk away. As long as the wireless signal is strong between this and your MacBook in this case, it will continue to draw as normal uh, without any significant loss, if any, of latency. So that's quite nice as you can set this all up and then go and sit down in the lounge on the couch and carry on drawing on Photoshop on your Mac. So what's it like drawing on an iPad? Well, I suppose it's like drawing on any other iPad, native iPad application, except now you have the ability to use the power of your desktop applications. Something that slowly but surely is becoming a non-issue with powerful applications like LumaFusion for video editors and Procreate for, uh, for people that are drawing, among others, uh, even that application that I was using on my Mac is available for the iPad or any iOS device and it's fully featured the same as the desktop app, the sketchbook. So yes, if you specifically want to use something like the full-blown Photoshop or one of the Adobe products, then this is something for you. If you're quite happy to draw on the broken down version or one of the other powerful apps that are available for the iPad Pro, then your workflow could be moving it from there to finish it on your Mac in the various applications that you need. Even some of the more powerful comic applications that people use well, a lot of the professional comic illustrators use are becoming available for iOS. If you want a bigger tablet to draw on, I mean, you're limited with this to either the 10 inch iPad Pro, the new iPad, which is 9.7 or whatever it is, and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro at this stage. That's as big as you can get if you're going this route. If you need something bigger, like one of the Chinese UG or something, you're looking at 22 inch, 24 inch right up to the new Cintiq from Wacom which is I think 32 inches that's a big drawing tablet so if that's what you need or if that's what your requirement is for working daily on something like that but well, then you're going to have to go for something that's going to cost you a lot more but if it's not 
this is a pretty good alternative. Bearing in mind that drawing on an iPad is a glossy piece of gloss that you are drawing on. So it's a very hard, there's very little resistance as far as for your pencil and that type of thing. So it's not a true or close to a true drawing experience. I have heard some artists that actually do this, that use things like AstroPad, the professional version, use a matte screen protector, just a cheap screen protector that's matte, that adds a little bit of resistance to the pencil. It gives them a feel of drawing a little bit closer to the professional tablet. So there's a little bit of that resistance for your drawing. Also, most of them use these. You'll notice I was wearing it earlier. It just covers the bottom two fingers and the bottom of your hand. What this does is it uh, creates a little bit less resistance from your hand on the screen. If your hand gets hot, then obviously it starts to stick. A little bit of perspiration will come through. This prevents that and also helps with uh, palm rejection on the, some of the cheaper tablets that the palm rejection is not really that great. You can pick these up on Amazon for, I think they're about six euros. There'll be affiliate links for everything that we used in the show today, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, hit the little bell, Magodi, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.